in terms of the background. Of course, on the prime lens, the background is more dissolved and nice and smooth and creamy, but looking at the zoom lens, it's actually not that bad. To be honest, I expected it to be similar looking image to my long lens when I step about one and a half to two meters closer to the subject than I have to do with my long lens so I think it's a good example that when you think about your background like you also saw in my video how to get amazing backgrounds and you think about the distance between the background and the perch that once you do that you can actually create very similar looking images with nice and smooth backgrounds using a lens like this so all it is is because it dissolves the background a little bit worse than the big prime lenses that you have to be a bit closer and ideally your background has to be a little bit further behind the bird so how did i get that first of course i stepped closer but then i also went a little bit lower because there's a hill behind me by going lower i get a bit further a bit more distant background and get a very similar looking image with a really nice and smooth background So as you can see now I'm actually filming the same Jackie Winter from the same position with the two different cameras. So you can see in the video the background is actually a lot more dissolved with the big lens and even though I'm shooting at f11 it's still a lot smoother than shooting on the 150 to 600 millimeter lens and by the looks of it the worse the background gets the bigger the difference between the two lenses are because the 600 still dissolves the background really nicely whereas the 150 to 600 as soon as the background gets a little bit more sticky or has a few different colors it shows up a lot more and the look is just not as smooth anymore as you get with the big lens so that seems to be the main difference on the rock before we didn't notice this as much because the background was already really nice and there's not many distracting elements in the background whereas on the distant backgrounds with a lot of sticks the difference becomes a lot more obvious and I have to get a lot closer 
to the bird to get a similar look and similar style of image. Another thing I just noticed is that this 150 to 600 is actually a fair bit shorter than the 600 prime length. So I assume it's only like, I don't know, 550 or 560 millimeters. Because when you look at the two pictures, it's actually quite a difference. Now let me show you one more reason why I really like using this thing. Because you might say at the moment, well, the difference is more or less marginal. Why pay all this different money? Well, first of all, when we look at the image quality itself, clearly this one has a lot more details and just the file just looks smoother and cleaner. But besides that, I can use extenders on this lens very well without a problem, without much of an image quality loss. Whereas on this lens, you're maxed out at 600 millimeters, which is the real advantage of a big lens like this. And the main reason I use it because I don't have to be as close as us today where I was only five or six meters away on another day. I can use my 1.4 extender and stand 10 meters away or I can use my two times extender and stand 12 or 14 meters away and still get a similar looking image. So I spook the birds a lot less and I'm just a lot more flexible and that's one of the main reasons I'm really using this big lens. See and this is the real power of the two times extender. I'm ages away from the rockin' but I still get a decent sized willy wagtail in the frame. And let me grab that little camera for a second and I'll show you what this shot would look like with that zoom lens from this distance. <laughs> and so now I basically have half the setup in the shot and not just the top of the rock like I have with this camera. And like I said before, that's the real power of having these big lenses with the wide apertures because you can use extenders, you still have good quality and you can stand this far away from a skittish bird without really affecting his wares with this lens you just have to be so much closer to the bird to get a similar result do you need this lens or a similar expensive big lens to take outstanding bird images no i think today has proven that even with a cheap setup like this you can take fantastic bird images but as i said in my background video already you just have to work a little bit harder to get the same looking images you have to be a little bit closer to the bird and the background has to be a little bit further away. But if you get those things right, you can absolutely take stunning bird images with a setup like this.